Warning, this entire video will contain the spoilers for the entirety of LEGO Ninjago Crystallized. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to make a very very short video, well not short, depends on how long I talk about this. I want to make a little video about Ninjago Crystallized. If you didn't know, that was the final season that Ninjago will put out and it just finished airing about two days ago at the time of the recording of this video. So. Was it a satisfying conclusion or a disappointing end? Let's find out. So, what were the things I liked? First of all, Crystallize has two halves, because there was a really big mess with the release schedule, so the first half released in May, and the second one two days ago. So, the first half is a 10 out of 10 for me. I loved the prison stuff, I loved Fuji Dove, I loved all the characters, and the return of Harumi was set up really really well in the final episode, the Council of the Crystal King was set up really really well throughout the episodes, some really great stuff and some great commentary on what the ninja did over the past couple of years, even Nia's return was done really really well in the first five episodes, just a solid, solid first half, a 10 out of 10 for me. So, now what did I think of the second half? Well, this is where the cracks of this season kind of start to show. First of all, Harumi, it turns out, this is the same Harumi that we know from Hunted, which is kind of dumb, as you see, I thought Harumi had a change of heart in that season, but I guess she didn't. And, you know, I expected this Harumi to be the Prime Empire Harumi. That's why, you know, she was evil, but <clears throat> I guess not, this is the same one, and Overlord somehow resurrected it, which does, that stuff was kind of dumb, in my opinion. I mean, her room was just, in my opinion, quite lame, even her character arc was really, really obvious that she would just redeem herself somehow because she would attack the Overlord, but was done so bad because her, like, turn to the good side happens in the second final episode when the Overlord reveals that he created the Great Devour or something and she now realizes, oh, maybe this guy is evil, which is so stupid. I mean, it just makes Harumi look like a complete buffoon and it just underdoes her entire character arc in Hunted. So yeah, Harumi, big disappointment. So that was my biggest complaint, most likely. But what are my other complaints with the second half? Well, there aren't really many. First of all, the, I mean, I guess the Ice Emperor stuff could have been done better, as I still think that the Ice Emperor is Ninjago's biggest missed opportunity ever, and it's honestly sad that they brought him back just to, like, make a couple of jokes in, like, two minutes, and they title an entire episode about, an entire episode about him, which is really disappointing. What are the other things, though, I didn't like? And last quick thing, this is a very small gripe that I had, and this doesn't go to the second half, this can be also put as a criticism of the first half, and that is no crunch and knuckle. I expected for the final season for them to at least return as they were the first comedic duo. They didn't, the Skullkins didn't reappear, only Whipflush appeared for in the background, which is really sad and really disappointing. At least crunch and knuckles had apparently, apparently it says on the Ninjago wiki that they had like a reference, there was a reference to them in the monastery in Seabound. There was like a picture of them, so at least that. And yeah, just really sad and disappointing that they didn't appear, as they're still alive and we haven't seen them since season 4. So yeah, but the second half was still really, really solid, and let's talk about the final battle, you know, the, the final, final battle of all of Ninjago. Was it good? Yes, I would say so. It dragged a bit as it was like almost 10 episodes, I believe. So there were some portions of that battle when I was like, oh, well, that's another episode where nothing will happen because the ninja won't just die in like episode 25. And the overlord won't die in episode 25. So there wasn't really a lot of tension for most of the battle. And that is mostly because the episodes are 10 minutes. So you cannot really put a lot of stuff in those 10 minutes. But something that I did really love about the second half was Garmaron. His arc, amazing. Christopher and his relationship to him, amazing. The only four, amazing. Garmaron easily was my favorite character because I still believe that he might be the best written character of the entire show. And his interactions with Lloyd were also really fantastic. Lloyd sometimes was a tiny bit annoying, but you know what? I still loved 
the two of them a lot. And especially in the final battle where Garmadon faked his death. Uh, but yeah, so the final battle with the Crystal King, was it good? Well, the ninja turned into like these dragon forms and they look really, really awesome. Even cooler than the Lego figures. And then they turn and well, they don't turn into a dragon. Their powers like turn into a dragon. And that dragon, basically, Lloyd commands it and in two minutes he destroys the Overlord. And the final battle itself, I mean, it felt a bit short. You know, like, for the final battle of the series, it was... I, I, it wasn't disappointing. It was just... My problem with Crystallized was that when I compared it to something like the March of the Oni, uh, Endings, that was the final episode of March of the Oni, that was like... that felt like the perfect conclusion that Ninjago could have had with the first Minjutsu Master and a ninja uniting for one last time. Beautiful ending. I still believe that is the best episode of Ninjago. And that, that service, like, not just as a perfect end to the Oni trilogy, but as a perfect ending to the series, if the series ended. Meanwhile, Crystallized feels like an ending to the Wildborn era and this season, but it doesn't really feel like an ending to the entire series, you know? And that's what disappointed me the most. I didn't get that feeling of finality. I got a feeling that, oh, the season ended and the Wild Brain stuff ended, but I didn't get a feeling that, oh, wow, all of Ninjago was ending. Which, I guess, could be counted as me being disappointed, but I still really enjoyed this season. And the final scene was emotional, in my opinion. I really loved it. Garmadon turning to Christopher one last time and getting that montage of rebuilding the monastery, that scene was good, because that scene actually felt like a final scene of the entire series, and the shot of Christopher the plant, that felt to me like, oh wow, Ninjago just ended, yeah, that's good. But the problem is that the fight with the Overlord doesn't have that feeling of finality, because everything after the Overlord fight, yes, that feels like an ending of the series, and it feels great, and it feels like a true sense of, you know, a finale, but but the fight with Overlord, that feels like an ending of just one season. That isn't like the final battle that could end the entire show, you know? Compare that to March of the Omni, which that felt that it could be the final battle of the show. So that's really my only issue with, of course, Harumi's arc being stupid and Harumi just being both annoying and just, you know, meh, because they kind of ruined her character and yeah. So those two things were my two gripes with Crystallized, and yeah, as you can see, they're they're only in part two. Because part one, in my opinion, is perfect, especially the music in part one. The music in part one was amazing, and the animation too. What I loved about the music was how they reused a lot of older themes for certain characters that weren't used in ages. That was fantastic. So yeah, as a whole, I would give Ninjago Crystallized a solid 8 out of 10, and... If I were to put it on my Ninjago ranking, I would say it's like number 6 out of 15. So I would say that's a pretty good spot. Maybe number 5, but I I think more of a number 6. Perhaps in the future I will make a video on my ranking of, Ninja of the Ninjago seasons, as that seems like a fun concept. But yeah, what did you guys think of Crystallize? Let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye!